Bentornati, and welcome back to Dwarf Fortress for Beginners, the series in which I teach you how to play Dwarf Fortress using mainly in-game tutorials and guides, plus a few tips from myself. In the previous episode we looked at containers such as barrels and bins, and how they make your stockpiles between 10 and a thousand times smaller. In this episode we're gonna take a look at the refuse and dumping guide, and then we will discuss rot and miasma. Alright, so, where is the guide? Refuse and dumping. As your dwarves live and work in your fortress, they will generate refuse. This includes everything from bones and other remains to worn out clothing. You can gather the refuse in a refuse stockpile. Some refuse can be put to use, for instance, shells can be turned into crafts. Most of it will just generate foul smelling miasma. If your refuse stockpile starts to fill up, you can create a dump zone. Use the zones menu to select garbage dump and draw a rectangle over a cliff or hole and then designate items for dumping. This can be done either from the items info sheet or by dragging a rectangle over everything you want to dump using the dump designation tool. Ok, let's close this and get a little bit more in the details. So what's a refuse stockpile? A refuse stockpile is a stockpile for which you selected the refuse category or, and this is very important, by selecting the all category. If you select all and click on custom, everything is enabled, including refuse. And if your stockpile doesn't exclude the refuse category entirely, something like this, it's still technically a refuse stockpile. Why does this matter? Because as we said in a previous episode, a refuse stockpile accelerates the decay of items in it. Even just one item of the entire refuse tree enabled in, in your stockpile, everything in this stockpile will suffer from increased decay, from accelerated decay. Again, I explained this both in the previous episode and I also made a short about this, so go watch them. If we look in the details of a pure refuse stockpile, so we click on custom, we will find that it accepts almost all the items present in the game. This does not mean, however, that your, your dwarves will just go in here and throw everything in the refuse pile. It simply means that all these types of items can become refuse. Food may rot, clothes eventually become tattered, even wooden furniture becomes unusable after a few centuries. When that happens, those damaged, rotten or worn out items will be stored in the refuse stockpile and eventually disappear entirely as the decay process is accelerated. A refuse pile is also the normal destination for all the inedible animal bits that result from slaughtering animals. This includes shells, bones, teeth, hooves, as well as hair and wool. Now these latter categories are listed separately because they also have other uses. Notably, crossbow bolts made of bone are considered pretty good for hunting animals, making bone a renewable resource. And wool can be spun into yarn at the farmer's workshop. Last but not least, note that there's an item type for fresh raw hides. As opposed to the other item types, fresh raw hides are always stored in a refuse stockpile. So if you want to have them closer to your tannery, you will have to create a refuse stockpile right there. The guide also mentioned miasma. Miasma is the stench of rotting food and corpses. It's represented in the game by purple gas clouds that spread around and give your dwarves unhappy thoughts like I got caught in miasma, how disgusting. Body parts, meat and cooked meals will rot in a few weeks if they are not stored in a food stockpile. It doesn't matter if they are in a container, like a barrel or just on the ground. If they are in a stockpile, as well as a few more special places like a starting wagon or the trade depot, they are considered properly stored and will not rot. On the other hand, a barrel of plump helmet biscuits sitting outside of a food stockpile will rot. Meat and organs sitting in the butchery shop while all your dwarves are holding hundreds of stone boulders will also rot. 
wasting valuable food and making the dwarves angry at the same time. Rotten items, however, will not generate miasma if they are stored outside. And this is why it's so important to have a refuse stockpile outside, at least for the perishable bits. But wait, aren't we constantly being told that the outside is a harsh and dangerous place? Yes, that is true. But rejoice, because I come to you with tips and tricks. There is a way to make the inside into outside, or bring the outside inside, in a certain sense. You see, once a tile has been exposed to the sky, it will be forever considered an above-ground tile. This knowledge is unfortunately lost in the current version of Dwarf Fortress, as there isn't a detailed look command that can list all these properties anymore. Anyway, let's make it practical. First of all, we need to find a suitable place. So, I need to both look underground and see that I have I have a lot of space that I can reserve in here. And also, this space is largely uh, devoid of trees. I can, however, remove a few more. So, let's send the dwarves to chop down a few trees. Okay, so there are several ways to achieve this. The simplest one, in my opinion, involves digging a room-shaped pit from the surface, so basically digging down and then building a ceiling over it, and after the room is sealed, we can connect it to the rest of the fortress. Let me show you. So I go to digging, and I select the channel tool. I need to check where this room is going to be, then come upstairs again and decide a size that I think will be enough, and designate all this area for channeling. Channeling means digging down. Now that we unpause, our dwarves will come in here, and they will start digging out this pit. Now we can seal this room once again by building something on top of it. I personally prefer going for a retractable bridge. So, I go to Building, Constructions, Bridge. The nice thing is that a bridge can be built pretty big. Um, let's see, we go for retractable, yes. Because with this, I, I don't necessarily have... Let me show you, actually, the difference. So, when you start building a bridge, this is besides, but... If I start building right on the edge, it doesn't allow me to, to click, because the, the normal designation is for a drawbridge. If instead you do retractable, you can click on the empty tile and go like this. Okay, let's make this all out of couple blocks. Alright, the nice thing about the bridge is that it usually requires much less material to build as opposed to constructed flooring, because to build constructed flooring, it's one material per tile. In this case, instead we used, what, 16 or 19 logs for all of this? Alright, as, as you can see, this dwarf is now carrying all those either 16 or 19 logs, something like that, and looks like they are building now. Construct building. Of course, building a bridge that is this large will take quite some time. There you go, it is done. So now we have this underground room that is totally sealed from the outside world. And what we can do is come in here and use the normal dig tool to dig a corridor. Actually, let's let's make it closer to the rest of the fortress. Why, why go? Why go in the middle, if you can take a turn right, earlier? There you go, so now this is officially part of the fortress, it's a room that we can access from the inside of the fortress, but believe me, this is all considered to be above ground. Digging down with the channeling usually leaves behind these upward slopes, but you can easily remove them, but usually the um, remove stairs and construction tool just like this. Okay, fantastic. Now that we have this, now that we have this room, we can go to the stockpiles, 
designate a stockpile. I will not cover the entire area because I also want to make a corpse stockpile in there. So click on accept, click on refuse. And I will call it inside refuse. There you go. This is now a refuse stockpile. Now the dwarves are going somewhere. Where? Oh, they're they're getting all the shells, of course. At this point, when the room is uh, sealed and all prepped, you can close it with a door in here. But it's not crucial at this point, because should you have rotting bits in here, they will not generate miasma, because again, since they have a uh, artificial ceiling on top and they were exposed to sunlight at, at least once, they are considered above ground. You can imagine that the uh, constructed ceiling has very good ventilation, and that's why. Alright, the guide also mentioned the dump zone. Uh, let's see how the dumping mechanic can help us further in the management of refuse. As you can see, if you have a fisher dwarf going around fishing, they will bring just tons and tons of mussels. Uh, pretty much everywhere, there's, there's a few biomes where this doesn't happen, but I've, I've seen it basically on everybody that is learning Dwarf Fortress right now. What we can do is periodically come in here and create a new zone somewhere, let's say in one of the corners or even right here, and it must be a garbage dump zone. There it is, accept. Now that we have even just one tile of garbage dump in there, we can click on the uh, item designation tool and designate items for dumping. And you know what? I will happily dump everything that's in here. Now the dwarf basically come in here and stack all the items on top of that single garbage dump tile. What's important about this is that even if we then claim the items again, those items still count as being inside this stockpile because they are officially, well, on top on a stockpile tile. So this is an effective way to compress your garbage in a single tile. But wait, the guide in here said draw a rectangle over a cliff or hole and then designate items for dumping. What is this talking about? Because we we are we are stacking items and actually as as you can see like the list of items <laughs> it's taller than the than the screen in here. Uh, but we are doing it on the same level. There's no hole, there's no cliff. Now on this map, unfortunately, I don't really have really steep cliffs. I don't have a canyon or anything like that. You may benefit from this mechanic if you are building, let's say, on the side of a really steep mountain or you have a canyon nearby or something like that. I will show you, um, but I need to create a cliff artificially first. Alright, what we have in here is a wooden platform connected to the ground by a ramp that is three Z levels tall. What I'm gonna do in here is create another garbage dump zone I will make this like so, but I will also make sure that one tile is adjacent to the vertical drop in here. Now I can go looking for something to dump in there, so let's see. Let's dump these shells and unpause. Oh right, I almost forgot. By default, dwarves ignore refuse that is outside. These shells are now outside, and so the dwarves will not move them. What you need to do if you want to move outside refuse is come in here in Labor, Standing Orders, Refuse and Dumping, and click on Workers Ignore Outdoor Refuse. If you click on it, now it says Workers Gather Outdoor Refuse. It is still preventing them from gathering outdoor vermin remains. Just because your cats are constantly going around and killing like little birds, uh, fluffy wumblers, fairies and stuff like that. Uh, and that could generate a lot of work just for hauling those. But if you want to see the outside really clean, just click on this. 
and your workers will gather all those those vermin remains. Anyway, now they should come in and haul those shells. Okay, let's pause for a second, let's go up, and let's see what happens. Aha! Uh -huh. Did you see that? They came to this spot, which is the one tile of the entire garbage dump zone that is adjacent to the vertical drop, and they threw the items down. They are one... wait. They are one, two, three vertical levels below. So, how does this work? If you have a garb garbage dump zone, and it's adjacent to a vertical drop, the dwarves will go there. So, if this was, let's say, like this, they would have instead stacked the items in one of these tiles. But if you have one or more tiles that are adjacent to a cliff, a vertical drop, a ledge, any way you want to call it, the dwarves will recognize that as the place for dumping items. Additionally, should your fortress have a lot, and I mean a lot of verticality, you can use this method to manually transport items across multiple Z levels in a very short amount of time. However, as you can probably understand, this only works in one direction and can also cause accidents. Alright, this is it for refuse and dumping. The guide did also mention crafting with some kind of refuse, but I'm intentionally avoiding getting into it because in the next episode I'm going to cover trading and the production of trading goods. So if you want to know more about that, you could, I don't know, subscribe and enable the notifications? I don't know. Anyway, thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you again in the next episode. Alla prossima!